out here just uh, giving clothes away. We've been out here for about half an hour, gave away tons of stuff, shirts, pants, bras, hats, coats, shoes, and uh, we just want to give back some love to the community. It's, uh, it's, all, it's all action, baby. Street action. This is Johnny Hurley. He was a musician, a five-star chef, an activist, and a member of the local anarchist media collective, We Are Change Colorado. On June 21st, he died stopping a mass shooting. That afternoon in Old Town Square of Arvada, Colorado, a man named Ronald Troike shot a police officer twice and began firing at parked cars and local businesses. Johnny returned fire, killing Troike, and died in the process. Police immediately hailed Johnny as a hero and said that Troike had written a note saying he would kill as many police officers as possible. Little is currently known about Troike, who was 59 years old, or what motivated his apparent anti-police views. The department released six quotes from the apparent note without context or any kind of photograph or scan of the note. Troike had been arrested in 1992 on a misdemeanor assault charge and pled guilty in 1994 to a DUI when he was about 32 years old, but no records show any apparent recent legal issues. He had filed for bankruptcy in 1992 and 2013, and he was evicted from his home in 1995. The threat to our officers and our community was stopped by a hero named Johnny Hurley. Johnny's actions can only be described as decisive, courageous, and effective in stopping for the loss of life. What happened next is equally tragic. A responding Arvada officer encountered Mr. Hurley, who was holding a rifle, and our officer shot him. Our police department and community's view of Mr. Hurley and his actions are heroic. It wasn't until four days after the shooting that police revealed it was responding officers, not Troike who had shot Johnny, having apparently mistook him for the shooter. The footage police released was incomplete, only from one angle and cutting off before Johnny shoots the shooter and the police kill Johnny. As soon as the story came out, a bunch of us were like, oh, they're not telling us because the cops shot him. Obviously, like five days later, they told us that. Oh, they're not gonna tell, like, all the things that we thought, you know, as conspiracy theorists, all the things that we thought might be happening, obviously played out over the next two weeks. And we're just like, Okay, yep, that's, yep, that, it's crazy and exactly what you would expect from the system that we live in. This is the parking lot where Ronald Troike pulled in. He was following Officer Beasley, he saw him walking down this way. Uh, he pulls into this third spot here, parks his truck, uh, grabs his shotgun out of the car, and starts following Officer Beasley up there. He's, he's running, he's jogging, you can see that in the video. And to which point is where he gets up right about where the asphalt ends, maybe a little further, yells at Officer Beasley. When Officer Beasley turns around, he then shoots him twice. Officer Beasley falls over here. At this point, Ronald Troike starts walking this way. There are police vehicles here somewhere. Uh, he shoots out two of the windows in the police vehicles, reportedly shoots another one into the air. And at that point, he starts heading back to his vehicle to get the R-15. That day I was in the store. Um, we heard seven, you know, loud gunshots. There's maybe about seven people in the store at the time, and um, Johnny was out front. He just parked in our lot uh, in his truck and uh, just finished up a cigarette. And within about 20 seconds after he came in is when he heard shots. Johnny just ran, ran straight out. Right about here, actually where I'm standing, he pulled his weapon out, ran all the way out, and then when the, the guy came back, I guess according to the video that I've seen, he actually had by that time had an AR-15. While police didn't release video of Johnny firing at the gunman, he can be seen running across Arvada Square toward the threat. Meanwhile, the shooter can be seen putting the shotgun back in his vehicle and returning with an AR-15. So looking Looking west here, we see the there's a plywood board and a banner hanging down that says human. That's the, it used to be the window for a restaurant here called So Radish, a vegan restaurant. There are bullet holes that went, there were two bullets that went through that window. There are three, three marks above that window. So 
the shooter apparently was shooting his AR-15 in that direction, got off at least five shots that we know of from the spot that we're standing on right here. Uh, Johnny would have been over here, right behind this brick wall, uh, and his position on one knee with his with his firearm to shoot the shooter. We don't really understand what happened after that, but it's, it sounds like he was you know, shot or mistaken for the for the suspect after that. Reportedly, there was a police officer came around here, saw what was going on, maybe mistook Johnny for the shooter and shot and killed him. We think he probably got shot here. There's a couple, there's a few different marks that we think are bullet marks. Here, here, and over here, this one, the brick is actually cracked. A responding Arvada officer encountered Mr. Hurley, who was holding a rifle, and our officer shot him. Well, at that point, Johnny would have had to go up and, and grab the man's AR-15 and either return here, if this is where he was shot, which the bullet hole seemed to corroborate some of that. Uh, we're not sure about it. Or he would have been shot over there with the AR-15 in his hand. But we have, we have questions. Why would, he, why would you pick up the AR-15 and then come back to this position to get behind the wall again if the shooter's already down? It's, it's kind of a weird situation because he was very critical of the police and he was very critical of the system. And so it's, it's kind of a weird space for, I think, politically, um, how the media and how the police are kind of, you know, spinning this. And, you know, I, I hope that the, the, the person uh, doesn't get lost in the in the narrative or whatever. Uh, I was only 20 when I met Johnny, but he kind of took me under his wing and made sure to kind of teach me the ropes of activism and learning how to, you know, speak, you know, freely and use free, freedom of speech, but do it in a good way. And uh, we did a lot of, uh, we did a lot of events together over the years. This love requires no permission. This love does not require funding. You don't have to sign a contract. Johnny came around in 2008, and he was always really passionate. It was his idea we needed to go out and, and make some love police videos where you basically offer free hugs and uh, to people on the street with signs and just love people. And that was... That was his idea and his brainchild, and they came out really beautiful. When's the last time you hugged another human being? That's a good question! It's been too long, whatever your answer is. Hi, Mr. Shirtoff. Hi, how you doing? How you doing? Good. Is it true your name means son of the devil in Russian? I've looked it up. Why are we so scared of terrorism? Are you guys scared of bee stings? You guys gonna be spending billions of dollars to protect you from bee stings? Do you really want to do that, folks? One of my memories with Johnny, you know, we, we did a lot of uh, confrontations with, with, uh, with regard to 9/11 Truth, and we spoke out on uh, at one occasion when Michael Chertoff, the founder of Homeland Security, was in town. We questioned Michael Chertoff about September 11th. And I just remember Johnny's just like very much bravery to be able to go and ask questions of these politicians, uh, you know, and, and demanding transparency and accountability. Mr. Chertoff, every guy has never been this lot sent out and shot They never provided Sit down and shut up. Mr. Chertoff, every guy has never been this lot sent out and shot up. They never provided Sit down and shut up. Never, ever. No one came to be here and shut up. Leaving, shut up. up. This FBI does not have evidence to connect Bin Laden to 9-11. All who travel through the United States airports have to be subjected to having their picture taken of their naked body and uh, being exposed to potentially dangerous radiation. He also, him and, him and another uh, We Are Change member, Turtle, used to go to DIA and um, they basically would walk around in their sneakers and underwear and they would, and they would question people about the invasion of privacy. And they go, oh, is this uncomfortable for you? Because like, this is essentially what you're, what you're giving with the body scan. 
<laughs> How do you folks feel about the naked body scanners at the airport? <laughs> you know, they want to look at you and lessen your underwear every time you board an airplane just to make sure you don't got any bombs in your britches. Or floats your boat. How about you folks, how do you feel about the naked body scanners at the airport? Naked body? You're cute. Well, thank you. Turtle, we are Change Colorado. Guess we'll have to make do with public, public display. But that is the other side of Johnny where, you know, we are very politically active and we try to make these, make these, uh, our voices heard in very non-threatening ways, but very, uh, very uh, elaborate kind of, kind of situations. I mean, like, if someone, if someone at DIA saw two dudes in underwear giving interviews to people asking about invasion of privacy, pretty sure you wouldn't forget that moment. Do you know what a GMO is? A genetically modified organism. Genetically modified organism. Genetically modified organism. Correct. Would you support uh, an initiative to uh, to force companies uh, to put these labels on the food so that we know what we're eating? I think it would be wise. Honestly, I don't think I would actually read them. You you wouldn't read the labels, no? Most people would. Colorado right to no petitions getting turned in yeah. in a train with the crowd over there. I met him originally in 2014 when we were both working on the label GMO campaign. We were working to get. Um, that on the, the ballot initiative and he would come over we hosted uh, educational potlucks where people would come and we'd get together and we'd share food and, and stories and information and Johnny would come and play music often and just like be there. He'd cook food for people if uh, you know, sometimes he'd have people that would have cancer and he would go cook the meals or he would uh, do different uh, events. He was a very great chef and a very great cook and, you know who would you know use his skills very just to, sh to share. I met Johnny first in 2013 and he was cooking up some food for the kids. Good organic non-GMO food and uh, <laughs> it was great. He helped us on Colorado Right to Know labeling initiative for labeling GMOs and we got it on the ballot, yes on 105. Show them it's funky, show them it's not right It does matter who's wrong or right Don't eat it, don't eat it, don't eat it Sometimes people forget the power of the, of the written message, the power of words in your face. Big, colorful letters that stand out. Uh, in the public. It's a very effective way of spreading a message. So uh, I came out here. I didn't have to pay anything for this sign. This probably cost me less than a quarter to make. Uh, and I'm getting my message out to thousands of people right now. It's very, very effective. He, he just had like this amazing adventure spirit. He uh, was very talented in many ways. Uh, being a five-star chef, he could cook a five-star meal over a campfire uh, in the middle of the woods or anywhere you were at camping with him, which he really enjoyed doing. So that was What about his musical talent? Oh musical, he was all about music and engaging the community. Sinclair, the FCC, Universal Warner and BMG. They run the airwaves of payola policy. Rich white man on the hip hop monopoly. He loved playing the drums. He was known as Johnny Verbal. And I got to see him a few times uh, you know, freestyle as well as just perform as Johnny Verbal and it's one of those things that you see it and it's just incredible and I will remember those moments forever. Johnny Verbal! We used to do the We Are Change open mics and bring in music all the time and if there was any new people he would always go and engage and talk to them and make sure that um, they felt welcome. He was an anarchist, he identified as an anarchist, he, he was an agorist, he, he believed and practiced this way of life, and at the same time he was always ready for like, if, if I'm wrong, I, I'm gonna know and I'm gonna change it. He was definitely a man of uh, independent, uh, independent freedoms, sovereignty, uh, personal liberties, basically being in charge of your own life and don't let anyone else tell you how you should live your life. Uh, anarchism, I think the way that I think the way that we, we kind of agreed on it is just the idea that all interaction between adults should, should be voluntary. All human interaction should be voluntary, 
consent should be our like primary principle. If something is violating someone else's consent, then that is wrong, unless it's like in defense of someone that's being harmed or whatever. But like, yeah, and, and agorism being the philosophy of Samuel Konkin put forward, it's if you accept anarchy, the idea that violence is wrong, basically we should we should all respect each other's consent. Agorism takes that a step further to make all of your economic actions outside of the realm of government, outside of that realm of violence and, and coercion. So using the black and gray markets as much as possible to starve the system. So he was kind of more anarcho-capitalist and I was, I'm very much anti-capitalist. Um, but we agreed on most things and it was nice because we could have really friendly conversations about it. And we still saw each other as allies. And, and even though we, we we'd say, okay, we disagree on this, but it was, it wasn't like, oh, you're the enemy, we disagree, you know, it, it was, I, I really appreciate friends who I can actually have a disagreement with and, and still continue that conversation. You know, issues aside, like, I think the base in all of it was really just like, his passion came from compassion. He loved, he loved people. The last moment that I got to really spend with him, he showed me how to use my firearm in a way where um, even though I'm disabled and have issues with my hands and back, that I was able to protect myself. He, he, he got to find out that like I am afraid of using my gun and am afraid of it. And so he took the time to show me how to use my gun in a way where I can feel comfortable with it even though I am not very strong in, in my arms and in my, in my hands after an injury. So it's... It's one of those things where um, he, he took that moment and, and, and it was important not just to him, but that I was able to pre protect myself no matter what. In all those years I knew Johnny, I never knew he carried a weapon. I never knew that about him because it wasn't something he was either proud nor ashamed of. This wasn't your regular gun, you know, just, you know, weakened warrior. This was someone who took it very seriously, was very well trained, and, you know, I, I think it takes a special person who can go up to someone with an AR-15 with a with a handgun, you know, in a very wide open area. But Johnny's at the Army surplus store because he's prepping. He knows at some point he's going to be needed. And in that moment, he just springs up without question and he's just the hero to save the day. And so I just want to make sure that we all take home today that inspiration, to be inspired, means to be in spirit, to take home his spirit with you today. He's here with us right now. He just quietly knew that his role in life was to be a protector of people. And I understand that he um, did a lot of training during COVID, like really, you know, like I went to my garden and buckled down and created a whole new garden sanctuary. And his calling was not that. His calling was to learn how to keep people safe and to protect them, the ones that he loved and cared about. And to have that conceal and carry and be prepared for just such an event saved a lot, a lot of lives. And even though we lost him, he saved so many, so. Definitely saved lives and for sure if that even most likely like policemen, policemen lives, because it sounds like this guy was really out for policemen. You know, no, no one that knew Johnny is surprised that he stepped up to save people's lives. Even being someone who was actively against the idea of police as they exist and all the police brutality that we see in America, I don't, we don't know if he knew that the guy was a cop that had just been shot. If he had known it was a cop, I don't think it would have slowed him down either. Like he, he sees someone doing wrong, like doing harm, he's gonna step in the way. And that was very much like he, there's a reason he had his concealed carry and there's a reason he trained because he wanted to be ready to protect his community. Johnny didn't like police. Johnny didn't like law enforcement. Johnny didn't like the state uh, 
the state and their laundry list of laws and, and different citations that they can give you. I took some photos of Johnny where Johnny was carrying a mirror and the, there was the cops in the, in the, in the mirror that he carried and I, I remember taking those photos and those were just moving photos and then to see those resurface, uh, we were down there in Denver at a police brutality rally and we had, we'd seen that go around uh, from somewhere in Europe and then we decided to bring down mirrors and do that ourselves in Denver. The Thin Blue Line posters with Johnny's name does not do Johnny justice because that's not who he was. You know, he was critical of the police and, and I don't want like what his life was about to be hijacked for something else that he wouldn't necessarily endorse. So I, I know that whenever the situation happens, people like to jump in and, and, and use it for whatever purpose they have, you know. Um, what is the media getting wrong right now? Uh, well, the media is not doing journalism for one. I mean, that's a huge thing. You know, you don't, you don't just take what the police tell you and, and then just read it. <laughs> you know, uh, there's a lot of questions. There's a lot of questions that aren't being asked um, that I don't have the answer to, but they're, they're not being asked and, and they should be asked. Now, at least we know he was shot by the Arvada Police Department, but was that one police officer? Was it more than one? There's so much we don't know that we need to set right in our minds so that we can move forward and begin to work together. I think that they're trying to just like let it fall to the wayside before they actually release what really happened. They cut off the footage when they when they released the footage of the shooter. They cut off as soon as Johnny showed up to the scene. They didn't show the shooting, the actual shooter get taken down by Johnny. Um, and they're claiming, and this is still a claim, that he picked up the he picked up the shooter's AR-15. He would have been on Good Morning America and been a hero. You know, he saved all these lives, and then instead, the people that potentially would have been murdered were the ones that murdered him on accident and uh, allegedly we'll see what happens but yeah we need the truth. Justice as love, justice as compassion, justice as evolution those are the kinds of qualities he would be seeking not retribution and punitive damage and I don't believe with any part of my heart he would want to see this get tied up in a court system which I think he felt was a broken system uh, and that's maybe putting it nicely. I just think it's really important that we see the video and because not many people that I know think that he picked up that AR-15 and I don't know if it necessarily changes the story at all if they just misreported but I think it's really important that we find out what, what happened that day and that we always remember the history of Johnny. The officer or officers who shot Johnny have not been named. The Arvada Police Department has committed not to comment further or release video until at least the Jefferson County DA concludes their investigation. The department isn't scheduled to begin wearing body cameras until 2023, a deadline imposed by state law. Of the multiple security cameras at the scene, the department only released one incomplete angle which they cut before the crucial moments. Even at the conclusion of the investigation, they say the DA has the discretion to determine what, if any, evidence the public should see. Ford Fisher, News to Share.